Namaste. For the last 12 years on this channel, we have pursued the ontic conversation. That is, questions like, who am I? What am I? What am I doing here? <laughs> what is this place? How does it work? What is it all for? What is the purpose and meaning of life? And so on and so on. And the discussion centered on those questions. And we have chosen as our source materials the great spiritual teachings of the world, primarily the Vedic tradition and also the Buddha's teaching. Now, you notice we don't use the words Hinduism or Buddhism because these are derivative religious teachings and traditions. But we go to the actual source materials themselves, the Upanishads, the Brahma Sutras, the various Puranas and Tantras, and of course the original Buddha Suttas, the Sutras spoken by the Buddha himself. Not the fancy, uh, decorated and exaggerated versions published and uh, studied by various Buddhist sects. We don't buy it. We prefer the plain, simple truth. Not the fancy, elaborated, different versions, which are basically fancied, imaginary, made to stimulate, excite, and impress people. And I suppose a lot of people want that. But that's not going to lead you to the truth. That's going to lead you to trying this and that, searching in this material world for some kind of satisfaction, which is just not to be had. So then what? At first, one tries to follow the different teachings that lead to higher states of being. I don't know if you see where this is going yet, <laughs> but as long as we are pursuing being itself, we're going to be disappointed. It's not going to be satisfactory. It's not going to lead to the end of suffering but rather to its continuation, because all being is duality. There's myself, and then there's everything else. I and the other. And as long as this dichotomy, as long as this duality persists, there is no resolution of desire. I want this, I want that, I want a new car, I want a better mate, I want a better job, I want more money, I want a bigger house, I want, you know, it just goes on and on. And even if you actually achieve the goal of religion, which is afterlife existence in some kind of heavenly environment, you're still not going to reach the end of suffering. Why? Because whatever wonderful pleasures you can experience in those realms is not the end of desire. And desire is the cause of suffering. Why? Because everything that we experience, even in heaven, is going to be imperfect, unsatisfactory, temporary, and conditioned. That is, it is the product or effect of some cause. 
So even if we go searching throughout the whole universe for higher and higher causes, we still have to experience their effects or their results in a temporary way. And because we, the self, is eternal, that is not going to scratch our itch. The English word itch, signifying desire, comes from the Sanskrit word itcha, as in itcha shakti. And it means the same thing. It means a desire. For example, it's stated in the Upanishads, the Supreme, Brahman, desired, I am one. Let me become many. Let me be born. And from that flowed the consequence of the creation of the material world and different species in which the Supreme Brahman could experience birth, life, and death in many, many different flavors. So we being the conditioned being resulting from this creation, are going through all these changes, thinking that this is me, this is myself, this is who I am. Missing the point completely, and therefore being always unsatisfied and feeling always incomplete. See, this is the existential tragedy of life. Life is being, and being is duality, and duality is suffering. Why? Because our real nature is not duality, it's non-duality. Brahman, the self, Pure consciousness, awareness of awareness alone. This is the only state in which there is no suffering, no desire, no coming into existence and then going out of existence again at death. No conditioned existence in which we have to experience the effects of prior causes which then become the causes of further effects and so on and so on, ad infinitum. Just as there is no end to the material creation, we can't discover, no matter how far we look with our telescopes, there doesn't seem to be any end to it. So in the same way, no matter how many lifetimes we experience of being, we can never find that perfect form of existence that gives us complete satisfaction. Even if we go to heaven, even if we experience heavenly delights for millions and millions of years, it will never be enough. There will always be some desire for more. This, by the way, is called greed. And this is the source of suffering, because to desire then means to seek the object of the desire, which means action, which creates causes that produce unintended consequences, unanticipated effects. And this is called karma. Karma may be happiness or it may be distress, but in any case, it is not subject to our control in the moment because it is a result of past causes, and we may not even remember those causes because they occurred in a previous life. So as long as we remain in this material existence, in life, in being, we are subject to karma, and therefore our life is not under our control. We suffer the cruel arrows of outrageous destiny, as Shakespeare put it. 
So we don't want this. We really don't want it. What we really want is to again become the non-dual Brahman, the source of everything, the witness of everything, the cause of everything. And this is accomplished through not spiritual, not religious means, but through realization of Brahman, realization of the self. Now, the Vedas prescribe a step-by-step -step process of higher and higher states of consciousness, higher and higher realms, with more and more beautiful and perfect and knowledgeable and powerful bodies, and so on. And the ultimate destination of all this is to become Brahma, What's the difference between Brahma and Brahman? Is that Brahma is a dualistic being. And although he is the creator of so many aspects of our material universe, and although he is so powerful that he is looked at as the primary progenitor and the ancestor of all creatures, still he is subject to ignorance. He is subject to unhappiness. He has problems. <laughs> he has difficulties. He has struggles. Just read the Puranas. Read the scriptures, please. <laughs> if you study these scriptures, the only way you can find to transcend all of this, all this suffering and its causes, is realization of Brahman. Now, Brahman is described extensively in the Upanishads. And we have Shankaracharya to thank for bringing out the actual meaning of the Upanishads, especially in his commentary on Brahma Sutras. So we should study this. First of all, the Upanishads. There are at least 10 Upanishads, and I'll link to them in the video description here, that give all the basic material that is summarized in the Brahma Sutras. And you should be familiar with this context before you study Brahma Sutras. I learned this the hard way. <laughs> I tried to dive into Brahma Sutras back in 2010, 2011. I even wrote a book about it which I'm not going to link to because it was completely off. <laughs> and this was very confusing for me because I kept having to go back and refer to the original texts of the Upanishads in order to understand what was going on. What was Vyasa talking about? What was the actual subject matter? What was the referent to which he is composing his sutras. But when I did that, when I actually went back to the original Upanishads, they're talking about Brahman. They're not talking about any kind of dualistic existence. This shook my faith in the dualistic study of Vedanta according to the Vaishnava tradition. And it led to my taking up the study of Brahman and even Buddha's teaching, which deal with non-duality. Because, as I found out, after spending like five years living in Tiruvannamalai, studying Brahman and worshipping Shakti and Shiva, that realization of Brahman is that which we are actually searching for. Not even promotion to the heavenly planets, or not even realization of conditioned Brahman, the secondary Brahman, Brahman with qualities, Saguna Brahman, is going to give us the ultimate satisfaction that we seek. 
only realization of the original, non-dual, primary Brahman, Nirguna Brahman, means the end of suffering. That is the only solution that is ultimately satisfying. And it is the aim of our work on this channel. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.